So a lot of the problems that people are trying to solve, they're looking for solutions to problems. Well, there is one, if you were a really, really well-educated horse, you don't have too many problems. Hi everyone, we've given you a lot of information to think about as far as theory goes and how horses learn, how they learn the good things, how they learn the things that they shouldn't learn. Let's do a little bit of practical work now and just look at what every horse in every discipline, whatever the breed, should be able to get done on the ground. Now, before you start exposing the horse to things and desensitizing the horse, just make sure you've got some basic control. And, and those things might include being able to back the horse up. Just from the hall to here, one, two, one, two. I'll just speed up that rhythm a little. That's pretty good. And I'm looking for the horse to yield through his body, but also through his feet. So if he's just moving his feet and he's blocking in his body, it's not what I want. I want the horse to yield from the halter here and move his feet backwards and look for that rhythm. I'll probably control the hindquarters now and just make sure I can step the hindquarters over. Same thing. <clears throat> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. When he steps over well and he's not moving his front end, allow the horse to win, take the pressure away. Now it's not just something I do just for the sake of doing it. It's something I do just in order to be sure that I've got the horse's attention. So I should be able to step the hindquarters over here, make sure it's not the shoulder that's coming across, step the hindquarters over there and have the horse's head and step the hindquarters over here and have the horse's head and always be able to ask the horse to face up, look towards me. Now, the fact that I've got his head it's because I've got the hindquarters. So rather than pull on his head, control his feet. And I know that if I can control his feet, the environment won't control his feet. You're always better off, it's a great horsemanship saying, you're always better off to have two eyes than to have two heels. So be able to step those hindquarters across. You're going to have to really walk in there, be determined about it, put the rhythm in your feet, one, two, one, two. And if he's not moving, push him along. But don't slow up if he slows up, move his feet. When he makes an effort, allow the horse to win. Once you can do that, just check out any halter pressure should get responses. So if I put a light pressure here, I want the horse to yield. Now I could do that here behind his head, but the most important thing is that he's yielding from the halter, that I could step his feet back a step, that I could step his feet forward a step, and all those from light pressures. Back a step, forward a step, Make sure he's not bracing in that forward step there. Step back and his feet should come forward rather than lift up his head. If you're putting on halter pressure and he's lifting up his head and he's blocking in his feet, he hasn't had that, that, that response to the halter isn't well conditioned. So it needs to be to where the halter pressure moves the feet forward. If there's pressure on the halter, feet come forward. The head doesn't go up and the feet block and all that. That's, that's gonna get you into trouble. Make sure as well, I'll start on this side, that you can just reach up here, slide that hand down towards the, the halter, and that you can just bring that head around here from a light pressure. If it blocks a bit, fix it, and allow the horse to remove the pressure from himself. So I've got the pressure here. If he braces, I'll, I'll fix, wait, and when he yields, release really quickly. Should be able to bring that head fair way around here. I could do it with my hand as well, but get it around here to where I could, if I was sitting on the horse, he'd be looking at my boot. Same thing on this side, reach up here, slide it down, bring that around towards the shoulder. It might help you to fix your hand on the horse's shoulder so that you know you're not pulling on him. And that way, when he yields, he removes the pressure from himself. So that rope will be nice and tight here. And when he yields, it goes loose. Put some tension into the rope. When he yields, it goes loose. And when it goes loose, release quickly. We've talked about how to condition responses so that there's an exclusive pressure that builds progressively and is released immediately when the horse yields. And, and, and if we're following that, we should rapidly be able to get rapid responses from light pressures. If you've got those basic things under control, you can step the horse's feet back and probably be able to step the horse's feet back here. Stop the horse, I'll just step back one more step here. Step his feet back, take the pressure away and have your horse stand still. A lot of horses have trouble with stand still now. 
they're trying to go around jumping jumps and do all sorts of fancy things standing still is, is still a lesson so teach your horse go back there get out of my space go back there and stand still and make sure he's not coming and walking on your feet and, and m most importantly make sure that you're not moving your feet backwards you can move his feet he can't move your feet so I've got the horse he's stepped back he's standing still and now I can step in here maybe take that lateral flexion again bring his head around here and, and again bring that head around there and now start being able to touch the horse all over but in the beginning when I'm moving back here and touching the horse I'd like to have his head with me and then that way while I'm back here I know if I've got the head here I won't have the heels if the head goes over the other side you can get in trouble make sure that you can do movements like that and, and sort of smack on the horse with with kindness there we go and make sure that nothing like that is bothering the horse if you can't do these things here without him getting all frightened maybe getting on his backs a little bit could be a bit of an adventure for you if you can do that kind of stuff I'll just step up here and you could you could start with a a stick or something be able to rub the horse all over and just make sure got a flag here I could start I could I could start with a smaller version of that always find a starting point you know you might even need to start just with the handle on the stick and make sure that you can do that kind of this kind of thing and, and, and wave that round and not disturb the horse once that's going well for you you build it up so have an appropriate starting point and build on it so that's that whole shaping principle that we've already talked about and then be able to build it up to where you could move a flag around like that and have that horse touch him all over with it and probably start by touching the horse everywhere just be careful down here in these blind zones where the horse can't really see you could get some pretty surprising reactions so don't start there and don't start by shoving it in his nose and giving him a look at it just put it on his body and rub on it and do it like it's nothing if you start getting in here and saying oh whoa whoa all he sees is some sneaky lion coming up to kill him so walking up like this to, to prey animals that's not the best way to do it just do it like I'm just out here and waving this flag around and it's nothing don't worry about it relax your body put a bit of rhythm in the movement and remove the flag regularly so relax rhythm and remove the flag often so that he knows okay well if I and there's a notion of distance in there that I should mention to you if the horse is getting bothered just put the flag on his body and rub him if you can because if he's showing some flight response and the distance between the flag and the horse is getting larger because of the flight response you're probably conditioning the flight response you could be reinforcing the flight response uh, he runs away the distance between the flag and the and the horse gets a little larger so he thinks well that worked so he does it again so just make sure that flight response isn't profiting the horse and start again and build it up slowly you can always start over if you're using the shaping principle you can always come back to where you were and build on it again uh, and you should be able to really build those things up to where you know it, you just you couldn't frighten that horse if you even really really tried to and nothing would bother him uh, but, but you build on that every day a little bit better we're looking for habituation we're looking to, to get the horse used to things so you'd have to show expose the horse to these things more than one time one time is not going to get it done once you've got him to where he's not frightened you could even move the horse a little maybe just lead him forward like that and just make sure that the area where you put the humans isn't bothered if, if mr flag can't ride the horse you know i sure wouldn't put my kid up there so just make sure that up here where the people go make sure that that's nicely desensitized and the horse isn't worried by things up here start at a standstill later on you'll be able to move the horse around maybe step those hindquarters over bring the front end through here and move the flag up here a little bit be a useful thing to be able to do step the hindquarters over there bring the front end through and, and move the flag up here a little bit and make sure that as the horse is going around me here you know i can rub on him with that flag and and he's not speeding up his feet if the horse is worried the feet get faster 
So start on it, build on it, but just watch what's happening. You know, if his back feet are spreading out, getting further apart, the front feet are closer together, these are all signs that he's getting ready to move. The head comes up, the muscles get tight, the eyes get big. You've got to be able to read those messages. And just make sure while you're doing this, for example, as I'm waving this around the horse, just be careful with your lead rope. You know, I've not got that hanging around there. If the horse jumps forward, you could get yourself a kick. So just make sure that the lead rope is no longer than the distance between the halter and his shoulder. That way, if something does go wrong, if I flick up a bit of sand or something, he jumps forward, I bring his head to me. And if I've got his head, I won't have his heels. But if I don't have a, this well adjusted, now I'm not saying swing off his head, you're leaving him a little room here. I'm not holding him still, but I'm ready to bring the head towards me if he does move. If I was standing there with that too long, you know, I could get myself a kick. And, and, and you know, that's, that's, that's not good for the health, so we'll avoid that. Once I know that he's not afraid of things, I can still use these things to get lightness. So I'm looking for that balance. I want him as light as possible, but not afraid of anything. Make sure that you can get your horse to yield to pressure. So I put a little pressure on his nose here, and, and I can step him back. I could put a little pressure here on the hindquarters and step the hindquarters over. Looking for the same thing, one, two, one, two, one, two. Step the hindquarters over, give him a rub, maybe get in here. If you need to, you could push on the halter. Make sure you push on the halter and don't pull on it. You can't pull his head and push his shoulder all at the same time. That won't work. So got my hand on the shoulder, put my hand up here if I wanted to, or maybe here, and step the forequarters over and just same thing. Be able to one, two, one, two, and step his shoulders over there and step that across. There's a good boy. And as he pivots the hindquarters or the forequarters, he should, as I move the forequarters over, as I move the front end, the hindquarters should stay in a sort of a hula hoop sized area, about a, a square meter uh, there. And I could step that across one, two, one, two, one, two. Step that across. Beautiful. And just make sure when, he, when you're starting on that, you might not do the 360 degree pirouette, what you might do is put some pressure on and when he yields nicely, remove the pressure. Always when I'm putting these pressures on, putting it on as light as possible and then building on it if need be. If he yields really, really well, remove the pressure cor correct rapidly and give him a rub. So if I can get rapid responses from light pressures, that's what we're after. But make sure that the horse knows how to remove those pressures. If you do this, you get that. And so he'll know that if he moves over, moves away from the pressure, the pressure comes to a stop. And that's all he's really interested in is trying to find out, okay, how can I remove aversive pressures? Once I could do that, I could ask the horse to step backwards, maybe with a, a more indirect pressure. Now, you could use the code that you wanted to. Most people choose, I'll move around here to make this a little bit easier for you to see. Step the hindquarters across there. Happy that you can do that now. And, 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 and most people use a little wiggle on the rope and step the horse, like, there we go. Step that back. Now just make sure that you're removing the pressure while he's backing up. It's not once he's backed up, it's while he's doing it. If he backs up, he stops, and then you remove the pressure, you're rewarding the stop, and that's not what you want. Once you can, you, you might have to build that pressure up a little bit in the beginning. You know, you might not be getting responses from light pressures like that, but you'd always offer that. And if it doesn't work, then you build it up and get the horse to, and once he steps back well, look for an effort, there he goes. Stop, remove the pressure, allow the horse to win. Once you can back the horse up a little way, sorry man, there we go. One more, there we go. Once you can back the horse up, maybe towards the end of that lead rope, have him stand still, then you would offer the horse to come back to you and make sure you're using clear body language. So I'm gonna step back, do that. And then if he didn't come back to me, what I do is I just step that foot one back. There we go, one more, there we go, boy. What, what, what you do is you'd move your feet, you'd move your feet and, and, and then put some pressure on the lead rope. So in the beginning, I often reward when he comes back to me, maybe not right at the beginning when I'm teaching the horse, when I'm teaching a young one, 
But later, every time he comes back to me correctly, I'd give him a reward that's a food reward, positive reinforcement. The negative reinforcement would be the removal of the halter pressure if he, uh, if he didn't move his feet from the signal. So stepping backwards, there we go, offer a signal with your body and then put the pressure on the halter if he's a bit slow. Just make sure that he doesn't come in too close and he's not moving your feet. And if you're giving food rewards, just a little word on that, because a lot of people sort of give them a little bit willy-nilly, doesn't make any sense, and they're rewarding the horses coming and looking in their pockets, and then they're giving him food rewards, saying, thanks for coming and looking in my pockets. So I'll just talk about that for a minute. I'm moving my pockets in that, and he knows that there's a food reward there. If he wants it, he can't have it by, by, by coming and looking in my pockets. If he looks that way, I give him the food reward. Now you don't have to take it to that extreme. I actually give it with, a, with, the, with the arm outstretched when he's, when he's not looking in my pocket. So, so I don't reward that when he's looking in my pocket. If he looks away, I'll take the food reward so he knows it's there. He can't have it while he's looking here. When he does that, he can have it. But I'm strict about the giving the food rewards. They're not just handed out in some random fashion. Otherwise you might end up, people say, oh, you shouldn't give food rewards. But, the food reward isn't the problem, the problem is teaching the horse what, you, what he shouldn't actually learn. Once you can step your horse back here from a light pressure, so you don't move your feet, he moves his feet, then you can step his front end across. So make sure when you're doing that, when you start circling the horse, that you can step his front end across 90 degrees. Bring the horse around here and then step the hindquarters over. Step him back and move the hind quarter, move the front end over 90 degrees. There. Okay, stop. Bring his feet to a stop. Got him out of my space. He's nice little bit of space there. And step those four quarters across 90 degrees. His, his feet should be over there. So I move his feet over there. Now, I'd say lead, lift, swing touch would be the kind of phases of pressure most people should know about. Step him back out of my space, lead the head across, lift, lift that, a little confused there. I'll just set that up again. Step him back. I'll step his feet across towards you. Lead the front end, move the shoulder across. Now I might have to swing on that lead rope a little bit to get that shoulder to, come, to go across in the beginning, but I'm looking for light responses from light pressures. If he was a bit slow, I'd do that, and then I might have to swing that over and get that shoulder to step across a little bit better. But as he learns, pretty soon, he'll start being able to read you, and you'll just lose light pressures and step those shoulders across. Once I can step that shoulder across, I could speed his feet up a little. In the beginning, just make sure that you can always get the hindquarters back. Look at the hindquarters, step them over, step the horse back, lead the front end over, move the shoulders, slide your hand down towards his head there so that the lead rope's nicely adjusted, slide your hand down here and push the hindquarters over. Make sure you're pushing the hindquarters over and you're not pulling his head towards you. Step him back, move the hindquarters over, move the forequarters over, move the forequarters 90 degrees, Move the hindquarters over. Lead the forequarters across here. It's pretty good. Allow the horse to come through here. Slide my hand down the lead rope and step the hind end over. Step him back a little. Once I can do that, I can step the forequarters over. Speed his feet up a little. Start off nice and slow. If you had a nice light horse, you can play on the halter you can a little. Change his, the form of his body. You can change his. There we go. And be able to slide your hand down the lead rope and move the front end over. Now you might have seen there. I move my feet quite a bit, so I'm walking my feet forward as I'm as as I'm circling the horse in the beginning. Some people like to stand still, and I think it's a good thing to learn to keep your feet fairly still in the circle. I stay out here, I move with my horse a little. I'm actually interested in trying to control his body as well. So as I move with the horse, I could step, his, step him across here a little, 
get him to get out on the circle and, and, and control his body a little bit better. So I'm looking to control his mind but also his body and make sure that he's not getting around there all tight with his head in the air and his back down and bring that down to a stop. Step the hindquarters over, send him out the other way, move the shoulders over, be strict about that, speed up his feet a little, maybe control his body a little, you could start off allowing him just to circle nice and calm, pretty good. Just make sure you're not maintaining the horse all the time, keeping him going. If he slows up and you haven't asked for it, then put some pressure on. But if he's maintaining gait and he's maintaining rhythm, you would teach him to maintain that. We talked about that principle that horses should maintain the rhythm and maintain the gait without you maintaining the horse all the time. So I'm not there all the time, continue, continue, continue. But if he didn't continue, then I'm ready to correct him. He's holding that pretty well. I'm present, I'm here. If I just get totally absent and I, and I fade away, you know, he might, he might come to a stop. So I'm present, I'm there, I'm with him as we're circling, but I'm not maintaining him all the time. It's the same thing when I'm riding. You know, I'm not pushing him forward all the time, but I, I, I'm not just be, becoming a vegetable either. Getting him moving quite nicely there. Speed that up. Pretty happy with that. And later what you'll learn is how to do downward transitions, blocking here with the shoulder, maybe using the flag a little in the beginning, upward transitions, speeding his feet up a little, and then maybe later you'll even learn how to bring him in towards you here and, and change directions and maintain the gait, bring him in towards me here and move the shoulder across, and then block the shoulder and bring him down to a stop. There's a good boy. Head out there and give him a big old scratch. That circle we were looking at, you could use it for other things. So now that I can step the horse backwards, step the shoulder over, I could walk him across things like this. And, and you should. Horses should be able to walk across things, jump, jumps, step him backwards, move the shoulders across, walk him across that. Now just make sure you're putting the pressure on in the right place. You wouldn't try and chase him onto it and make the make the the, 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 the blue thing look all terrible. So you'd work and you'd work and you'd be able to move the shoulders across, move the hind end over, move the shoulders across and keep the horse a little bit busy. I'll show you some other exercises you might try. When you are sending your horse out over things like this, another thing that's important, it's not exactly the same thing as the circle. Send the horse out, bring him across there and after he's come across, step the hind quarters over. Bring the shoulders over, take him across, hind quarters and four quarters. Now, I'm just, I'm just saying that because some people might think, oh, you just circle the horse and you stick something out there. But it's really making sure that he's not speeding up his feet. He's going across here and after he's come across, I'll step the hind quarters over. And I do the same thing with a jump. You wouldn't do it in a, in a, in a very harsh kind of a way but you don't want any flight response. <clears throat> so lead the, move the shoulders over, cross the, the, the tarp or whatever it might be, the jump or whatever, and then disengage the hindquarters. But don't just go round in circles where you might get some speeding up and you might actually be teaching some, some flight response and that's not what you want to be doing. Just make sure you're not trying to chase the horse onto these things. Now I'd normally have this not far off the wall in the arena. And, and go between the, the blue thing and the wall and make sure that he wasn't speeding up his feet. Step backwards there, mate. Step those four quarters across and maybe I could give the horse a little bit of work to do and then come over here and be comfortable. Later on, I'll stop his feet on the, on, 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 on the river, on the blue thing here. But in the beginning, you just allow the horse to go across and just make sure you you're using the idea of comfortable creating a comfort zone. So by that I mean I could give the horse a little bit of work here. I could step him across sideways. Maybe I could move the hind quarters across. I could move the front end over. Uh, give him a little work. Maybe step him across sideways here as well. Give him a little bit of work to do. And then after having done a little work, come over here and get on this and, and make it a comfortable place to be. 
you could even add some positive reinforcement to that. Make sure you that he's not sniffing in your pockets and offer him some positive reinforcement on that so that it becomes a kind of an attractive place to be. You do the same thing with a jump and the same thing with a trailer load. Getting a little bit of rain on us out here, but that won't stop a horseman now, will it? So keep working with my man. Now, so we've set things up, we've done some desensitization work, we've moved the horse away from pressure, backed the horse up, brought him back in, backed him up and sent him out on a circle. We've circled, we've looked at transitions, direction changes, and your basic circle, send the shoulders out, disengage the hindquarters. We've sent him out over things.